All right, Bar Naturals Press, talk to the people, man. Let them know what's getting ready to go down. What's good? You're back with the Prez. And today I'm going to give you, in my opinion, the best sources of protein to build muscle. So, start it off. You want your protein to be a complete protein. A complete protein is going to provide all the essential amino acids. There's nine essential amino acids. Essential means your body cannot make them. It has to get them from outside sources. There are 20 amino acids in total. There are, the other remaining ones are non-essential, meaning your body will make them if they do not get it from food. There's also such things as essential fatty acids, but there's no such thing as essential carbohydrate. Past that point. So, another thing about protein to make it, to have it to be a top source is it wants to be bioavailable. What that means is your body is able to digest it and absorb it easily and quickly without bloating or without any digestive issues. So, you want to make sure your protein is a complete source, number one. And number two, how the bioavailability of the protein itself. Now there's a scale for this to be judged on, a bioavailability scale, and I think it's rated from one to 100 or one to 99. So from what I'm, from the research I've done and from what I've heard from and all the science, the most bioavailable source of food, protein, is eggs. And that's a whole egg. That's an egg white and the yolk. Eggs are the easy, easiest for your body to digest and use that protein efficiently. So if I was to name a number one source of protein for you, I would be eggs. So that would be tailored towards not only meat eaters, vegetarians could eat eggs too. I know vegans, that's not for you, but I got something for you guys also. My second source of let protein- Let me get back, I'm sorry, let me, I, let me ask you about the, the egg now. Now we say the, um, the whole egg. The whole egg. Now is it cooked, raw, like how? Okay, so yeah. the most bioavailable form of an egg will be raw. And now I, I do, I have in the past consumed raw eggs and I still would. But you want to make sure you're getting good quality eggs. You don't want factory farm eggs that are coming from a bad uh, chicken. You want the eggs to be raised from a proper animal. And that's usually, you'll see it labeled as pasture raised, organic, you know, organic eggs, pasture raised eggs. Usually those eggs are all okay to eat raw. And you'll see, you know, people in the past, you'll see, oh, Schwarzenegger down in eggs and those, I mean, Rocky and all them in the movies. Sylvester. So, so yeah, Sylvester. So it, it, people have done it, I have done it, and I've never gotten sick from it. But again, you want to make sure you're having good eggs but besides the fact you don't have to have them raw you want them lightly you don't want to overcook your eggs so I would say hard boiled would be the worst way to have your eggs because now you're boiling the yolk and, and like frying the yolk to a point where it's soft the yolk has the most nutrients and minerals in it so I would say poached eggs would be optimal if that you go sunny side over over easy scrambling too may, may, may take away some of the bioavailability of it but it still makes it a number one optimal source of protein because your body digests it easily and utilizes it very efficiently. What about fried eggs? Uh, that's sunny side up, that's over oh, easy. It's, oh, okay. it's fine, just make sure you're cooking in you know, olive oil. You don't want to be cooking in canola oil. You want to cook olive oil, uh, coconut oil, grass-fed butter. All those are good sources. Like I said, the grass-fed butter has a lot of CLA, and I messed up in my last video. CLA is conjugated linoleic acid. That basically a high, um, a high acid, a high linoleic acid for your body that's good at fat burning, and it's, it's really good for like, um, it's good for, just in general for your skin and it's a good fatty acid. So that's my number one source of eggs. Number two, red meat from pasture raised grass fed animals. I would say number one, bison, beef, lamb. I'm not going to name chicken, turkey up there because honestly I think turkey and chicken are weak birds and I don't think you should be eating a weak animal. That's just my opinion. So. I mean, maybe turkey more than chicken. I don't know. I think a turkey would mess a chicken up if you're seeing each other on, on the, in, in the fucking farm or something. Turkey seem a little bigger. But again, I like red, red meat from grass-fed, grass -fed, pasture-raised animals. Now, the reason why I stress it, I would literally say no to a steak or something or a factory farm. I'll literally say no to a steak or a factory farm burger if those are my options. I'll just say nah, and I'll just try to get myself some eggs. But, um... You really want your meat to be coming from a good source because that's gonna generate, that's gonna give your body tons of the, the amount of minerals that you find in one piece of steak is tenfold to that what you'll find in broccoli, spinach, all that. The iron and don't say oh you need this has spinach got more or broccoli got more protein per gram than steak. You're gonna eat one gram of broccoli. I mean you're gonna have to eat a plate of broccoli, a whole plate, maybe a hundred pieces to get where you're gonna eat from a piece of steak that big. And no one's gonna do that. So. On the, and it's going to be an incomplete protein. So again, red meat from a pasture-raised animal is going to supply you with a lot. So look, guys, you want um, omega-3s are the omegas that you want to really, really look for to get 
a higher balance of omega-3s in your body than omega-6s and 9s. That's the problem these days with inflammation and the general public. There's a lot more, there's an imbalance of omega-6s and 9s to omega-3s. Optimally, you want it to be like a 2 to 1, 3 to 1 ratio. Nowadays, you're getting 6 to 1, 9 to 1 ratios of omega-6s, omega-9s to omega-3s. Omega-3s are the good, healthier fats. Now, if you have more of the omega-6s and omega-9s, that's coming from like those um, PUFAs, those polyunsaturated fatty acids, those, those, um, those really bad, those trans fats, those, those canola oils. That's what's giving you these higher ratios of 6s and 9s. You really want it to be a higher in omega-3s and grass-fed meat. Pasture-raised animals have high, high amounts of omega-3s in it. CLA, grass-fed grass -fed butter, grass-fed, uh, if you're getting organic grass-fed grass raw cheese, again, that has all high omega-3s in it. Those eggs, those organic grass-fed eggs are high in omega-3s. Remember, guys, you want to higher, you want to try to get your balance of omega-3s to omega-6s as close as one-to-one -one or two-to-one as you can. You don't want those omega sixes and omega nines to take over and have a more and have an overabundance than there are presence of omega threes in your diet. All right, so number one. Hold on, is, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, I got a question you now on the meat. You said the chicken is a weak broker. Everybody's talking about yeah. chicken. That's the best. It's easier to digest or whatever than than uh, uh, red meat. Bro, Explain that the whole chicken being a I weak. Mean, in your opinion, yeah, break that opinion, down. Bro, I mean, but break it down. You could get you could get your. Okay, so just look at the nutrient profile of chicken to, to, to a piece of red meat. There's going to be way more iron, minerals in general in meat than there are in chicken in general. It's, a, it's a, in general, a stronger animal. Look at the size of a cow. Look at it's lean. It's all lean muscle. A healthy cow is lean. There's minimal fat on it. A chicken is a, is a weak bird. They got breasts on it. They got a lot, of fat, a lot of fatty meat on it. Even though there's lean parts of the chicken, the thighs and everything have all that fat, and it's just walking around eating fucking shit off the floor. It usually sitting in a cage. Again, it's a, to me, it's just my opinion, bro. I, 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 I'll eat it here and there, but I prefer a nice piece of steak, red meat, land. That's my opinion, so I don't mean to offend anybody, but yeah. I, I, if I want to eat a strong animal, bison, bison, cows, and again, you guys are preaching, oh, all these cows eat grass, they're strong. Well, maybe the grass is making them strong, but Regardless, you can't get the nutrients that the cow is getting from the grass in your body. It doesn't produce that. Yeah, way. that's what vegans be saying sometimes. Nah, like, cause nah. you, cause you say that the cow, yeah, cows they only eat grass, but if we eat it, it's an issue. They got different digestive systems. Their body, they, they, they could break down. They got different teeth. They have different, just different, um, small intestine. Their, their long intestine, their small intestine is different. They're meant to break down these foods and taking all this roughage. And our bodies aren't meant to taking all this roughage. This is roughage. Plants don't want to be eaten. They have, why plants don't want to be eaten? I don't know. They, uh -oh. That's why you got. That's why they, they, all these things got defense mechanisms. You, who's gonna pick a cow? How many people are gonna? Everyone always boils their shit. You ain't getting a uh, potato and eating it raw. You ain't picking something off the grass and eating it. Hold raw on now, like people. I eat kale raw. Um, a lot of people eat kale, uh, kale spinach, okay, okay. your but lettuce. It's roughage. It's roughage. It's not, okay. It, it's just it's just roughage, and it's not. It, again, it, it doesn't really serve a purpose as. For more than micronutrients, it all it does is serve its purpose of getting you some micronutrients. An overabundance of it is not it's not a source of protein. I'm not saying to avoid it, but again, a lot of these plants have defense mechanisms built in, so you can't eat. They're not they don't want to be eaten by humans. They, that's just it's a it's a known thing. It's science. It's facts. They don't want to be eaten by humans, but by humans. but but they want to be eaten by they want to be eaten by cows. They and, could be digested better. They have different digestive tracts than, than humans. Okay, something else now that you, you said. Would you say something about uh? Chicken has more fat on it than beef. You, well, I'm you saying chicken just yeah, break they that got down. that fat, you know. Yeah. All, all beef got fat on it. Right. But chicken's just like I said, it's just a weak bird. It got breast. You ain't gonna find a <laughs> cow with no breast. I, just to me, I don't. It's just my opinion. I just think it's a weak bird. So okay. I don't, that's just my opinion. Take that's it cool. How, take it how it is. Yeah. I prefer not to eat it. So. All right. Name it. Uh, number you three. I'm gonna go fish. So we went eggs. Eggs. Red meat. Now. Now we're going fish. Okay. Fish, great source. Another great source of omega threes. They got those good fatty acids in it. Most fishes tend to be on a higher protein side. Good source of fish. Some of my favorites are cod. I love scallops. Scallops are extremely high in protein. Really low in fat. Really easy to cook. You can literally throw them on a on a pan. Um, Sear them for a minute on each side and cook them in a little bit of coconut oil. Excellent meal. Cod, salmon, tuna, all really good source of protein. Low in fat, high in omegas, high in the good fats. 
low in the bad fats, and uh, very usually very easily digestible. Don't really cause a lot of bloating. Now again, that's the thing with these real protein sources: eggs, meat, fish. These one-ingredient protein sources are not going to cause a lot of bloating in the in the in the, in the digestive issues that combining multiple sources do when vegans have to do that when they can't get a complete protein source. So again, a lot easier on the stomach, easy to, to digest, and again, protein is the most satiating macronutrient. It will keep you fuller longer than anything else. So if you'll notice, if, so, if you start, if you eat a high carbohydrate diet, or if you eat a lot of sweets, you're going to crave it more and more. You're going to be hungry now, an hour later you're going to want more. If you drink soda, you're going to want another soda. It's all those carbs and the sugar, they cause cravings. It makes your body, they, they digest in the bloodstream quick. And that's what causes the insulin spikes, all these issues with diabetes and everything, and overweight people. And again, it causes cravings. It doesn't satiate you. Protein, again, it keeps you fuller longer. Are you saying that uh, vegans have more digestive is issues than people that eat red meat? I would say you. Would get out. What? Yeah. yeah break it. Yeah, go ahead. I, yeah. Like I said. Yeah. A lot of vegan. Like I said, a lot of vegans. They're going to be basing their, their diets around plants and all these legumes and all Grains. these hard to digest foods. A lot of them are hard how? to How many of those things are you eating? Are, are you are you just sitting there eating? How much do you have to eat to get to get a proper thing? So what's one potato, a proper thing? What do you mean? Like, proper? A, like a proper amount of nutrients, proper amount okay. of protein, carbs, and fats. What's, okay. what, what's uh one potato going to generate you? How many? How big of a potato are you going to eat? You're going <laughs> to eat a 10 ounce potato. That's going to fill you up. What are you, you going to eat with it? Now that potato is only supplying you with some carbohydrates. Where's your protein coming from? Now, where's your protein source? You're gonna you're gonna eat a bowl of hemp seeds. Now, hemp, like I said, I'm gonna get to my protein sources. But now you're gonna eat a potato. Then you're gonna eat a whole bowl of rice and beans. So the rice and beans are gonna be a vegan source of two proteins to make it complete. So now your bowl is gonna look like a whole bunch of rice, a whole bunch of beans, and a potato. No, no, no. You throw some kale with okay, that, or some, some spinach with that, throw some greens with that. Throw some greens with it. So yeah. Back, throw the back, potato back the out, and let's just say you got rice, beans, and kale. Yeah. Rice, beans, and kale. Right. You got a you got a meal of rice, beans, and kale. Mm, yummy. That's a very dense meal. Very dense meal. Yes. Maybe for 200 calories of rice, 200 calories of beans, maybe 50 calories of kale. You're gonna get 450 calories on a huge plate. Now you eat a piece of steak, four or five ounces of steak. It's gonna be around 300 calories. Throw some. Again, then you have a little bit of greens with it. A small piece of potato. Your main source of protein should be coming from that meat. The protein that you're going to be coming from on those for the vegan diet to get the sufficient amount that you could get from the same amount of meat, you're going to have to double them, almost double the amount of beans, double the amount of rice, just to get the equivalent that you would get with a small serving of meat. You understand what I'm saying? So you're feeling it's the density. So to eat that volume of food is not easy on the digestive system, in my opinion. Like I said, I've done vegan before. I tried it. I didn't do it right, but when I was doing it and the things I did right, it did cause a lot of bloating in me, even though I lost weight. Because, again, the calories are low, but the volume of food is high. So you've got to break down a lot of food, a lot of roughage in your body has to be broken down. So what about this? Uh, people say that uh, meat sits in your stomach for a week or days and all that. And, uh, you know, uh, the vegan diet, we break it down fast. Yeah, break there. Yeah, talk about right, that, so man. That's that a, true or not? No, nah, it's a myth. Meat, meat is digested just as easily, if not faster than, or, or just if not better than carbohydrates what? in your body. Your body is meant to have teeth, your, your, your digestive tract is meant to break down the amino acids. Again, you need to get essential amino acids from proteins, from, from outside sources. Your body doesn't want to break down 10 things to get them. It wants to do the least amount of work to, to, to function optimally. And to do the least amount of work is breaking down the least amount of food. So if I could eat one piece of food that's going to supply everything, as opposed to having to eat two or three different things in a big amount of volume, that's more work and more, hard, more work on my digestive tract than digesting one little piece of food, one little piece of meat. It does not sit in your body. I'm going to bring out, like I said, I went to school for exercise science and nutrition. I have textbooks with studies on it. I probably got it in my phone, but I'm not going to go through looking at it. But I'm going to send on the next time we link up, I'm, yeah. I'm going to bring a clip and I'm going to show you the study. I have it highlighted out for you that shows and proves that meat does not cause uh, sit in your stomach longer. It digests ju just as fast, if not better, and, and more easily than carbohydrates and all these better. starches and grains. So an eight ounce, let's say uh, the average, you say an average person might eat what, an eight ounce piece of steak? Eight ounce piece. So an eight ounce let's piece go, of steak is to, easier to digest to, than a to, plate of rice, yeah, beans, and kale. hundred percent. Let's go to chicken. Oh. Let's go to an eight ounce piece of chicken. Let's go to the weak bird. Yeah. Eight ounce piece the of chicken. Bird. It's going to give you 50 grams of protein, both of these meals. 
eight ounce piece of chicken, 50 grams of protein, 250 calories. Remember, four grams of protein, I mean, one gram of protein is four calories. So if you've got 50 grams of protein and eight ounces of chicken, that's only 200 calories. That same piece of chicken is gonna be low in fat. Remember, if you're eating a chicken breast, low in fat, chicken thighs, higher in fat. Okay, that being said, chicken, so you're eating the chicken breast, 50 grams of protein, low in fat, two grams of fat. So now two grams of fat, let's say three grams of fat, another 30 calories. You've got 230 calories right there from eight ounces of chicken, only 230 calories, and it's 50 grams of protein. Let's look at red meat. Mm. Eight ounces of red meat, of a, of a lean piece of steak, a sirloin, a fillet, something like that. Lean piece okay. of a piece of fish, a piece of cod, piece of salmon. Okay, you're gonna get 50 grams of protein. Mm -hmm. Again, still only gonna be at 200 calories, and you're gonna have minimal fat. Each of those pieces of meat, mm -hmm. pe meat, steak, chicken, all gonna be under 300 calories. You're gonna have one serving of rice. It's gonna get, give you 250 calories. You're gonna have half the, not even one quarter of the protein. Now you gotta double that with beans. So double the serving of rice and beans for half the servings of protein that I'm eating. Mm -hmm. So now you got double the serving. Of, now you're eating 500 calories of rice, mm -hmm. 500 calories of beans, and mm -hmm. whatever you're eating on your kale. So Money. All that, all that food in your yummy. Food, all that bomb. Yeah. Yummy to yeah. some. <laughs> yeah. Yummy to some. Work to others. Work to others. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's still you gotta okay. cook it. You're gonna I cook your you. rice. You're gonna cook your Back beans. Uh, I'm gonna cook this Thank steak. You. And again. Okay. So right. again, it's perspective, and, it, okay. and, and it's yeah. how, if you, like, again, I, like I said, I don't got nothing against vegans. Yeah, I know, I know, I just, we're having this conversation, but, you know, you can do it right, yeah. do it right, and it works for you, it works right. for you, but like I said, it's very, un, I, to me, I found it unsustainable, and okay. I know numerous vegans okay. that have went back to eating meat. Numerous, right. I could get one on my, I could get, I could yeah. bring one guest for you, or two guests for you. I gotta take time. one more shot, one more shot at the meat thing from me, one more shot before we go on to the next one. No, we gotta, we got time. Um, um. Okay, you're talking about the meat is easy to digest, and you saying, in your all opinion, them, maybe than the, than, the, uh, than the rice, beans, and kale. But that meat, it's no fiber. No fiber. No fiber in the meat. Right? Okay. Yeah, talk about okay, that. Well, no fiber. Again, I never said any, I never said yeah. I was against. against I know, I know. Yeah. I never said I was against vegetables. Yeah. I never said I was against starches or potatoes. Okay. But I said we're talking about protein. This video okay. is about protein. All right. So all right. when best, <laughs> best source of protein. Okay. Okay. George, all right. About meat. We and okay, I'm my <laughs> standard meal. So I'm gonna have meat. I'm gonna have rice. I'm, so. Look, yeah, people. Yeah, well, one thing. I'm sorry. People always say, "Where you get your protein from? Where you get your protein from?" Because I'm yeah, vegan. Where you Where you get your fiber from, man? Where, what, what about that? Most workout, yeah. I eat steak, mm -hmm. rice, and I always okay. have. I always have asparagus with, with a meal. Okay. Either or either broccoli. Okay. Some type of green. I always have greens and diet. And again, okay. pre workout If you guys remember, my shake is 70 grams of raw spinach. I got oh, okay. raw spinach. Right. I eat fruit. Fruit got yeah. tons of fiber too. Remember, guys. All right. Grass and greens ain't the only thing with fiber and beans. You know what I'm saying? So, okay. I tend to, when I'm looking for my fiber sources and my carb sources, I try, I try to keep them as a mainly a carb source. So again, when you're getting that, the beans, again, besides it being just a carb, you're also getting the protein in. So now you're getting a little bit of both. So for me, I try to keep my carb sources as just a carb source. So my protein, yeah. I try to keep as protein. So that's why I eat the meat, yeah. mainly a protein source. My carb sources will be rice. I won't go to beans for, for carbs. I won't go to shit like that for carbs. I'm going to okay. eat rice because it's mainly a carb. I'm going to eat right. banana because it's carbs. I'm going to okay. eat a sweet potato, a white potato because those are carbohydrate sources. Right. Beans. Oh, some people say I'm eating beans for carbs. Oh, then they say I'm eating beans for protein. So what is it? Is it a protein? Is it a carb? Is it peanut butter a fat? Is it a protein? What is it? Okay. Peanuts got I fats, got protein, and carbs in them. All so right. you don't go to these things to be a main source of something. Those okay. are just foods that got everything. When you're okay. looking for sources, Protein, like I said, one right. eggs, two yeah. red meat, so, three fish, four right. for the vegans. Yeah, let's go. Remember, I'm sorry to take it somewhere else, but nah, you know, nah, I just, nah, you know, nah, so I know it's a protein. We're talking for about the, protein. For I'm the just, vegans, like yeah. I said, I got nothing okay. against vegans. Right. And there are and there are some sources of protein out there that are complete, that are vegan sources of protein. Right. Now yeah. again, remember, complete protein. Yeah. Good. Yeah, yeah, name that one. Name the one that we right, so remember, to. complete source of protein yeah. has all the essential amino acids that right. you have to get from a food source. Yeah. So, incomplete would be. Rice, beans, incomplete. Complete vegan source of protein. My number one would be hemp. Hemp seeds. Hemp okay. powder. Right. Hemp, they got all the essential amino acids in it. And besides mm -hmm. that, I'm going to call you right back. I'm filming. I'm almost done. Here. So besides that, all the essential aminos. Hemp is loaded with nutrients and minerals. Hemp is a healthy, healthy food. It's got a lot of omega-3s and 6s in it. So it's got a lot of healthy fats in it, along with being a complete source of vegan protein. With that being said, remember I said about bioavailability. Hemp is not as bioavailable as bioavailable as eggs, meat, and fish. It does not. So 
Bioavailability means how much your body will absorb it. So say you're eating an egg and it's 95% uh, bioavailable. That means say for 100 gram servings of protein from eggs, your body will absorb 95 grams out of 100, right? If you're 95% available. Hemp may be on the lower side of 80% bioavailable. So maybe if you got 100 grams of hemp protein, your body will only absorb like 80 grams, 80% 80 of it. That's just because why? One, it's not, at, it's not, one, it's science, it's not a plant, it's not an animal source, it's not from uh, meat, fish, or dairy. Those are the complete sources that are the most easily digestible in eggs. And two, it has other things in it. It has a lot of, it has fat in it, and it has some carbohydrates in it, so it won't digest completely like a protein. Remember, bioavail, you want the protein to be easily digested and easily used by your body. So breaking down the hemp is going to break down other things in it as well, the fats and the carbs. So it's still a great source of protein and other complete sources of vegan protein. You got quinoa, you know, amaranth, but again, but the, best, you said, yeah, this the number one is hemp. Yeah, the reason yeah, why okay. I say that again is because these other ones tend to be more uh, other nutrient focused. Like they'll have other higher carbohydrates in it, higher fats in it, and it'll be less on the protein side. So again, you'll be to get the equivalent amount of protein, you'll be getting an abundance of other shit with it. Just to get a sufficient amount of protein, you'll be taking in almost like a two to one ratio of carbs, three to one ratio of maybe fats on some of these things, just to get a good amount of protein. So, hemp is still my number one. Now another one that I really, really like, I, chlorella, I take- Hold on, hold on, let me reset. Chlorella you said, hold on. All right, so, another one that I really, really recommend for vegans. Now I take this as a supplement myself, and I don't do it for the protein benefits of it, but just because it is, and it is a complete protein and is a vegan source, I take chlorella, or spirulina. Now, it's chlorella and spirulina, for those who don't know, they're types of algaes. They're from, uh, we get them from fresh water, I think. Well, actually, I know they come from fresh water. And uh, basically, it's a green algae. And when you take it in, not only supplies you with a complete a source of ve uh, complete source of vegan protein, it's living. It's it's a living food. It supplies your body with. Um, it when you hit, the, it's almost like how plants get their energy from the sun through like ATP, like through like photosynthesis. When you take these things, chlorella and uh, spirulina, and you go outside, and you're, you're outside in the oxygen in the sun, it helps your body generate ATP, which is your energy source, adenosine triphosphate. You could look into this, it's a fact. Take in stuff like this, like these living seaweeds and all these things that um, take in all this earth energy for you vegans, and that, that live off this earth energy and this uh, the sun power, you ingest them and they're living inside you still you will get some of that benefit so again number one I said was hemp and then if you want to go into it you could go into like the quinoa's and all that and then to combine for so again if you guys are looking for incomplete source of protein vegan protein if you're not always available to get hemp or quinoa if you don't that don't work for you you combine like rice and beans stuff like rice and beans I'm pretty sure like um whole wheat bread and uh like a nut like a nut butter or like peanuts like those two things combined make a complete protein and again what makes one what makes them complete is the rice will have a certain amount of the essential amino acids and the beans will have the other essential amino acids the rice don't and when you combine them it'll make a complete protein but now again the levels of the amino acids in these vegan sources may not be as high so which again will make them less of bioavailable to your body when you're taking them in so again, so if you're taking like an incomplete vegan source of protein, for instance, like rice and beans, if you're using that as your main source of protein, if you say you, you think you're eating 100 grams of protein from rice and beans, your body's only probably going to absorb like 50% of that, so you're probably only going to take in half of that. All right, so moving on from that, I'm going to just give you another guys a tip of what I think is the worst source of protein. Vegan, non-vegan, if you've got dairy problems, it don't matter. Do not, I, I would recommend not taking a soy protein. If you're eating something based, a soy-based protein, I would say I would get away from that. One, 95% of the soy out there is GMO, genetically modified. It's coming from a shitty source. It's going to cause a whole bunch of fucking issues inside your body. It's, it's known to cause bloating and digestive issues. It's known to cause like uh, skin sense irritable, like cause like skin rashes and everything. Um, and again, soy produces estrogen. Estrogen is a female hormone. Everybody has estrogen in their body, men and women. But intaking soy, and especially in high amounts, and soy could be like tofu, tempa, all those are soy-based shit, is known to increase estrogen in the body. And now, estrogen is anti-anabolic. Anabolic, Anabolic mean, means protein building. Catabolic would mean protein degrading. 
So having an abundance of soy, and which leads to an abundance of estrogen in the body, would lead to an, a catabolic, which is an anti-anabolic state. So it will make it harder to be in that muscle building state, actually. And when you actually think you're taking in protein to supply your muscles, the more you take in of this soy protein, it can have a detrimental effect on you. And again, like I said, most of the soy out there is genetically modified, and I recommend you should always try to avoid any GMO type foods, just because one, you don't know what kind of chemicals and pesticides they're being sprayed with, you don't know what's in them, and those are the foods that are known to really cause the damage in the body, leads to like the cancers and everything, and uh, just do your research on that, guys. So avoid soy protein and anything with it, and that's about it. All right, so your top ones, one more time, just run through the names again. Let's go, eggs, red meat, pasture raised, pasture raised, organic eggs, pasture raised, grass fed meat, uh, bison, beef, lamb. On the other end, at the end, you get the weak birds, chicken, turkey. Okay, number three, fish, cod, salmon, scallops, tuna, my favorites. Number four, vegan source, let's go hemp. Hemp seeds, hemp protein powder. Remember, hemp is an essential, complete uh, vegan source of protein. And the next one that I would say to avoid, soy. Okay. And that's a wrap. You do chlorella in there too or no? Chlorella, another great source of, but again, it's a vegan, it's a complete protein. Yeah. But again, protein is not the main benefit of chlorella. Chlorella provides other benefits that are more, uh, a, are more worth taking than, than looking for protein sources. They're going to provide that. Those, those It's going to provide all those um, those minerals, all the essential amino acids again, but again, it's going to provide that sun energy. It's going to help you get generate that natural ATP, and it's just going to help your body just be clean. So chlorella is also a detoxifier. It's going to detoxify. If you've got heavy metals from all these environmental things, these pollutions, these toxins in the air, chlorella is known to detoxify heavy metals, especially mercuries and shit. And especially with all this shit going on, everyone's getting tested, getting these fucking things putting up their nose. You don't know what's getting put in your body. There's mercury and all this shit. All these heavy metals, all the shit they spray in the air, it's all polluting your system. Chlorella, spirulina, these are detoxifiers as well. So again, besides them being an essential, essential, um, a complete protein source for vegans, they have better, numerous benefits that you should be looking for besides the protein. Okay, so, give me your social media and all that. Yo, Bar Natural Prez, B-A-R-N-A-T-U-R-A-L-P-R-E-Z, on IG, that's the gram, and on YouTube, Bar Naturals, B-A-R-N-A-T-U-R-A-L-S. Don't forget, like, comment, subscribe. I'm a man, good money's page. Come to my page, subscribe, check out the content, and uh, I'm gonna keep filming, guys. Let's get more, let's get more done. All right, thanks a lot, man.